Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developer. In this video, we'll understand about compound trigger and its advantage. So before starting with compound trigger, let us first understand what are the types of triggers and where does this compound trigger fits into the hierarchy and then we'll understand few information about DML trigger so that our understanding with respect to compound trigger will be better. So let us start with the types of trigger. So triggers are majorly classified into like DML trigger that gets fired whenever any DML operation gets performed and DDL trigger that gets performed whenever any DDL uh, operation gets executed. And we have system trigger which will get executed whenever a system event like log on log off and startup and shutdown happens. And we have another category of trigger called instead of trigger and these triggers are written on top of views basically to redirect the incoming DML operation into the underlying base table and we have the final category of trigger called compound trigger this is nothing but the consolidated dml trigger so instead of writing different dml triggers we can write one single compound trigger in fact this is what we are going to learn in this video so before starting with compound trigger i just want to give you a quick overview of types of dml trigger in fact all the information about dml trigger instead of trigger I have covered in some separate videos. So in this video, I'll cover about the compound trigger, probably the DDL trigger and system trigger, I will cover in some other video. So before starting with compound trigger, let us quickly go through the types of DML trigger so that our understanding with respect to compound trigger will be better. So DML triggers are broadly classified into two types. One is called row level trigger, another is statement level trigger. The row level trigger will get executed for each and every row that is getting affected. Whereas the statement level trigger will get fired once for the DML statement. Further, these triggers are further classified into like before trigger and after trigger as the name says whether the trigger has to be fired before the DML operation or after the DML operation. So based on the type of DML getting executed, these triggers are further, further classified into like insert, update and delete trigger. So altogether we have like 12 different types of trigger. To implement these 12 different types of trigger, we basically has to write at least minimum four type of trigger. One is called before statement trigger. So this trigger will get executed before the DML operation. Okay. Similarly, we have another uh, type of trigger that is called before row level trigger. The uh, keyword which differentiate the statement level trigger and the row level trigger is the for each row. When you specify for each row keyword, that means it is a row level trigger. So followed by the before statement level trigger and the before row level trigger, the DML operation will get executed and then it is followed by after row trigger. So as I mentioned, the for each row will say that this is a row level trigger and the after keyword will say that this is after row level trigger. Same way if you see in the before row level trigger, you will find the keyword called before and finally we have a trigger called after statement level trigger so here also you will see the keyword after and very similar to the before uh, statement trigger which will have the before keyword okay so these are the four uh, types of trigger within which we can implement all the 12 combination of trigger in fact i have mentioned like insert or update or delete that means these four triggers will get executed for all the DML operations that is insert or update or delete. If we want, we can write even uh, three individual triggers, one for insert, one for update and one for delete. That means we'll end up writing 12 different types of trigger. But to consolidate with these four type of trigger, we'll be able to implement the functionalities of all 12 types of trigger. So this is about an introduction about uh, DML types of trigger. In fact, all the information about the basic DML triggers I have already covered. So I just quickly given an introduction so that our understanding with respect to compound trigger will be better. Fine. Now we'll see what is a compound trigger. In a single line, if I have to say this is nothing but it combines all the four triggers what we have seen till now. That is uh, statement level before after and row level before after into a single trigger. So this is the key learning here. A compound trigger combines the following triggers into single trigger. That is it combines before statement trigger, before row level trigger, after row level trigger and after 
statement level trigger. Now let me show you the syntax of compound trigger so that it is easy for you to understand. So here is the syntax of a compound trigger. Uh, the very key keyword which differentiate the compound trigger from the individual trigger is the keyword called compound trigger. You can see here. So the syntax is very straightforward. Create a replace trigger trigger name for insert or update or delete on a table name followed by the keyword compound trigger which says that this is a compound trigger. And very important point, this particular trigger has four sections. One for before statement section, one for before each row section, one for after each row section, and the last one for after statement section. So whatever the logic you are writing earlier in the before statement level trigger, now has to come within the first section. So each section is identified by a keyword. So in this case, the uh, before statement section will be identified by a before statement keyword and end before statement. So this section constitutes the before statement section. Similarly, before each row and end before each row. So this section constitutes the before each row section. Very similar to that, we have a section for after each row and we have a section for after statement level uh, after statement level trigger sections so now whatever the code we al we were writing already in the before statements uh, triggers now we need to write within the before statement section so very similar to that whatever the code we are writing already in the before row level trigger now we need to write within the before each row section and very similar to that, whatever the code we are writing already in the after row level trigger, now we need to write within the after each row section. And finally, whatever the information we were writing as part of after statement level trigger, now has to be written within the after section, that is after statement section. So this is the key learning with respect to compound trigger. Okay, one more very important point. It's not necessary that you have to write all these sections. These all these four sections are not mandatory section. Whatever the section you want to write, you can just implement it. The rest of the sections, you can leave it. Now, let me show you a quick demo on this compound trigger. So here is the compound trigger that I am creating on an employee table. I just given all the four sections here. Fine. Let me just fight. first compile it. The trigger is created now. Okay, now let me execute an insert statement. As you can see here, this insert statement actually fires all the four sections of the trigger. That is before statement section, before each row section, followed by after each row section, followed by after statement section. Since this is just going to insert only one record, the row level triggers get fired only one. Suppose let, uh, if you are doing an uh, update statement, let me say update employee set salary equal to salary plus 100 where row name less than or equal to 2. That means this particular update is going to affect two record. That means the row level trigger will get fired twice. You can see here the statement level trigger will get fired once whereas the row level trigger will get fired twice. That is because the row level trigger will get fired as per the number of rows that gets affected. Okay. Let me show you one more thing. Suppose if I don't want to implement all the four sections of the trigger, I can just remove it. So let me just uh, have only the uh, statement level and after row level. So before statement and after row level, the rest of the sections I have removed it. Let me just recompile it. So let me just again execute this block. Now, if you see only the statement level trigger got executed, followed by the after each row trigger got executed. Okay, uh, so in this case, I've just showed you the sections get executed for all the DML operations that is insert, update and delete. In fact, we can uh, implement only for a specific operation by specifying three functions called inserting, updating and deleting. So these functions typically return you a boolean uh, value based on the DML operation that is getting performed. So you can use these functions to implement a specific trigger. For example, if you want to implement only the before statement level insert trigger, 
then you can just use this function and whatever the information you want or whatever the logic you want to implement you can implement within this if class by that way you can implement whatever the functionality of trigger you want to enforce it okay so basically insert trigger uh, to implement the insert trigger you can use the inserting function similarly to enforce or uh, to implement the update trigger you can use the updating function and similarly deleting function to implement the delete trigger functionality fine now let us see the advantage of compound trigger obviously the first advantage is that we are just going to consolidate all the individual triggers into a single trigger but this is not the major advantage this is just from the code maintenance perspective only the uh, one one more advantage is uh, we can have a global variable which can be shared across different sections for example in this case i've just have a global variable called g underscore variable that i'm using within the state uh, before statement section and within the after each row section so this is one more advantage because without compound trigger if you want to implement the same functionality we need an uh, extra package uh, to initialize the value from the uh, before statement trigger and to access from the after each row trigger the very important advantage of compound trigger is that it helps us to load the changes effectively using bulk collect that means whatever the change you want to load into a table you can capture from the row level trigger you can save it into a collection and that collection you can use it in the uh, after statement level trigger where you can bulk collect all those information into a table that is one main advantage another very important advantage of compound trigger is it helps us to resolve the mutating trigger very effectively probably i will talk about the mutating mutating trigger in a separate video and how to resolve the mutating trigger with and without compound triggers all the code whatever i have showed here are available in this blog link and all the interview questions are posted in the blog link and both these links are available in the description you can just browse through that if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new future video interview question sql practical question and concept videos if you want any questions to be addressed you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id and thanks a lot for watching this video